Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I've really been enjoying my time with Intel's i5 10400F. It's a great mid-range Ryzen alternative for those who'd rather use a Team Blue offering and whether you opt for an Intel or AMD 6 core chip, you'll be very happy. However, when buying the i5, I noticed another processor that sat at a near identical price point to it, and I had to double take, the i3-10-320. The reason I began this video paying compliments to both Intel and AMD 6-core chips is because I feel that for the money, both the 10400F and 3600 are fantastic options, but an i3 processor that encroaches on this territory with its 4-core and 8-threaded architecture well, why would anyone buy it, or why should anyone buy it? Well, with four cores clocked at a fairly high speed of 3.8 GHz and a turbo frequency of 4.6, it certainly is no slouch, but even if it does sound attractive to gamers who don't think they need a six-core solution, surely those people would just buy the six-core anyway. Now, I'm no genius, as you can probably tell, but two extra cores for no extra spend sounds like a far better deal. That is unless these two chips are significantly different in price where you live. Location is always worth mentioning. Just like the i5-10400F, the i3-10320 is locked and therefore best suited to the cheapest LGA-1200 board you can find, along with, say, 16 gigs of 2666MHz DDR4. For my tests today, I'm comparing it to the cheapest 10th Gen i3, the 10100, as well as the i5-10400F because of the fact that here in the UK, at the time of this video, it's nearly the exact same price. Sometimes the i3 even costs a little bit more. All chips are compared at stock speeds with 2666 MHz DDR4 and my slightly tired but still very capable GTX 1080 Ti. As we start the gaming then, it's important to remember that real world results will differ depending on the graphics card that you use, as well as the memory type and speed. We're using 2666 RAM across the board as I think it's the most realistic scenario for these locked CPUs. Buying a more expensive board just for the purpose of using faster memory doesn't make too much sense to me, though it is always a possibility if you are planning to update to a better chip later down the line. I've just taken what I feel is the most likely route with this test. So first of all we have Red Dead Redemption 2. With the i3-10320 we were seeing 86 frames per second with a 1% low of 67, a very respectable result. This is slightly faster than the i3-10100 so I can't really see the need to purchase this over that here, but of course the i5 with its extra cores was pulling ahead with about 9 more frames per second on average. Next up we have the remastered 2020 version of Crisis again with the high settings here. This is the high preset but I have turned motion blur off as I cannot stand motion blur. With the i3-10320 then the result at the top of this comparison here we were seeing 74 FPS with a 1% low of 35. Now I generally get quite low 1% low readings no matter the CPU I use because the game doesn't utilize your hardware all that well, especially processors. Again this was very similar to the uh, i3-10100 result. The 1% low was in fact the exact same during my quick test but the i5 once again pulled ahead with 82 frames per second and a slightly better 1% low of 40. Buying something like the i5 does guarantee you a little bit of a safety buffer when it comes to running games because those two extra cores and the extra threads really do help in some scenarios. But others, well, it's really not that much of a difference. Now Microsoft Flight Simulator is probably one of the hardest to run games of 2020. In fact, Flying out of the JFK airport in New York here requires a drop down to the medium settings for a smooth experience. I apologise if you just heard that monstrous motorbike go past outside. Anyway, the i3-10320, 42 FPS on average with a 1% low of 26. This is common when flying out of New York. Other airports in the game may vary and in some instances 60 FPS will be achievable easily at the medium settings. I choose this area because it's very busy and impacts our frame rate quite a bit, so it's a worst case scenario type test. The i3-10100 again, coming in ever so slightly behind with 40 FPS and a 25 
FPS 1% low, but the i5 10400F, despite its very similar 1% low, did provide us with a better average. Now finally then, it's Rainbow Six Siege. This was played with the very high settings and the frame rate figures here were taken from the benchmark run. The footage on screen, well, it's just for decoration to be honest. Very high settings at 1080p with the i3 10320 will give us 254 FPS with a 1% low of 176. The i3 10100 will fall slightly short of that with 248 and a 1% low of 171, whereas the i5 will pull ahead with 263 frames per second and a better 1% low as well. Again, I'd like to reiterate that you will probably see more of an increase with the i5 if you had a more expensive motherboard that could use better RAM and you had a better graphics card. Though when it comes to the i3s, I probably wouldn't go much higher than a 1080 Ti or the modern RTX equivalent. If we finalise with a Cinebench R20 result, then here we have the multi and single thread tests. The i3-10320 actually pulls ahead by almost a couple of hundred points here, just over a couple of hundred points in fact, with 2342 and then 461 in the single threaded test. Um, with the i3-10100 we were seeing 2127 and 440 and with the i5-10400F the single thread result actually comes in slightly lower than the i3s which is perfectly normal but the multi-threaded result comes in at 3021 and this is where a chip like the i5 will really benefit a user who is into making videos, content creation, stuff like that but in terms of both i3s the 10 320 would be a better choice in that aspect as well although in the grand scheme of things it's not worth buying over the 10 100 to be honest especially for just gaming purposes. Again, justifying my testing with 2666 megahertz RAM, some of you are going to be saying you should have used faster memory, but I have to say, you know, if you're buying one of these chips, I don't think you're going to be spending the money on a better board that could utilize faster memory, in my honest opinion. You might, as I say, if you're going to upgrade in the near future, but if you just want something that can play current games, you're probably going to throw something like this in an entry level LGA 1200 board that could probably handle all the games out right now. The i3s are still pretty good and the i5s as well at the lower end of things are still decent too. I just don't see why we need so many of them. You know the i3 comes in a 10100 variant, a 10300 variant as well and then we've got the 10320. The difference between the 10300 and 10320 is going to be even less but I'm sure some sort of OEM builder will probably purchase a lot of these 10320s. You know maybe go on the gimmick that it's the most powerful i3 to date, something like that. You know business system builders, I'm sure there are a market for them otherwise they wouldn't exist but let me know what you think of it down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.